Welcome, everyone, to our God Ordained Marriage uh, Corporate Fast. I am Sakila Coleman. I am so excited this morning, you know, this afternoon. I hope you are um, excited just how I am excited. Let me tell you something. The Lord has been speaking to me every since ever since 6 o'clock this morning. I have so much to share, okay? I hope I'm able to get it all out on our, um, you know, day one call. But listen, I'm excited. I'm excited. I got I to gotta calm down, okay? So before we get into the teaching, okay, let me go over the fast. Okay, let's, let's make sure everyone understands the fast. So today kicks off our three-day um, water, water fast, okay? So we fast in uh, straight water for 72 hours. Yes, you heard me correctly. 72 hours, straight water. You can have um, herbal tea. You can have organic cranberry juice. I showed the members of the academy last night the cranberry juice I drink. Um, and I own, and I usually only drink that on day two and probably some of day three. Um, but you can have those, you know, you can have water, herbal tea, the organic cranberry juice um, during these next three days, okay? So the fast started Wednesday at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's going to end Friday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can do it, okay? Don't overthink it. When you get hungry, that just, uh, you know, your, your body is used to eating at certain times, so that's the hunger pain. That's the habit, right? Just drink some water and then pull out your Bible, and the, the Word of God becomes your food, okay? It tells us this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God, okay? Um, we give into the poor today, okay? We give to the poor every day um, of our fast, all right? Now, let me say this before I forget, because the Lord keeps bringing it up to me. So here's the thing, okay, because this whole fast is about aligning our spiritual blessings in place, okay? We have to align these spiritual blessings in place. The reason why, and I'm getting into my teaching, so we're going to just go ahead and get into the teaching. The reason why we don't see these spiritual blessings um, manifesting in our lives, right, is because of the work of the enemy. It's because of the work of, you know, the kingdom of darkness, okay? So God, this is where he keeps pressing on my spirit to tell you. You got to understand fasting, okay, and how this works. When you fast, okay, when you fast, you are now inviting in your spiritual helpers, angels, okay? And matter of fact, let me let me find it right quick. Um it's somewhere. But angels, okay, is one of your spiritual helpers. The angels' job as you are fasting, right, and, and angels hearken to the word of God. So while you are fasting, you got to be speaking the word of God, okay? If You can't just say, angel, go and, you know, bring my, my blessings here. It's not going to go anywhere. You have to speak the word of God, okay? When you speak that word of God while you're fasting, the angel is now going, and when that angel go to get your spiritual blessing, if there's any principality from the kingdom of darkness, any evil spirit, that angel's job is to demolish that spirit. That angel's job is to move that spirit uh, or that principality out of the way, okay, and go get your blessing. Go get whatever it is that you're speaking uh, out loud over yourself, okay? Another thing when you're fasting, again, you have to – Speak. You got to pray the word of God while you're fasting, okay? Because, um, and, and let me put emphasis on this, because when you're fasting, the other help that God wants me to put emphasis on is his power, right? So just like these witches and warlocks, they, they have their little power, right? You know, but, but God's power is, is, is uh, stronger than the enemies, okay? Uh, the witches and warlock, their power is in magic, it's in sorcery, it's in, it's in spell work, you know, it's in um, these demonic rituals, right, whatever, okay? You tap into God's power with his word. Scriptures say God's right hand shatters the work of the enemy. So you got you to gotta look up scriptures, okay, that's talking about God's power, and you got to repeat that while you're fasting. You got to say this stuff um, while you're fasting. Say, God, you said your right hand, glorious in power, shattered the enemy. So I'm calling on your um, right hand, and I'm asking you to shatter every work of darkness over my life. Shatter every work, every spell work the enemy has been plotting and, and planting over my life in Jesus' name. Shatter all of that witchcraft work. 
shout of that work of sorcery, you got to take authority over this stuff, okay? And then I want you to uh, get in that habit because when we move this way in the spirit while you're fasting, you're ushering in God. That's just the whole purpose of fasting. You need God to come in, okay, so that his power can destroy that magic, the, the sorcery, the witchcraft, the ritual, the spell work, okay? This is how we move the blockages, the confusion, the chaos, whatever the enemy planted over your life, okay, the rejection, this is how you move it. You got to melt it down with that word. You know, the scripture saying, wait a minute, y'all, I got to get my folder. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Wait a minute. Let me pull up my scripture. Okay, Jeremiah 23, 29 says, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So that's what it is. When you use God's word, right, you know, and you call on, just like how I just said the scripture on the Lord's right hand. So when you say his word and you call on his right hand and you tell him, take your right hand and you shout at the work of the enemy, right, the word is now is acting like a hammer and it's breaking all of that demonic work, that demonic, you know, whatever they planted over your life, it's breaking it down into pieces. This is why, see, I want you to look at it like your spiritual blessings are buried. They bury your spiritual blessings. On top of your blessings is the spell work. On top of the blessings is the witchcraft. On top of it is the rituals, okay? On top of it is the word curses. On top of it is, you know, how they how they looking into your life, you know, via the divination. I, this is how I hope you can see this um, uh, visual, visual um, in the sphere. So when we pray the word of God, God is able to come in and break this stuff down and off of your life, okay? So I'm excited. So understand that, okay? So let me get to this teaching, all right? Um, I think I answered everything about the fast. Um, like how I said, it's three days water fast, no food, be, uh, drinking a herbal tea, organic cranberry juice. Um, if I could get anything else, y'all, you know, you let me know. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I'm excited. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So you hear that? God has already blessed you in the heavenly realms with every, every, whatever your prayer request is, God said, I already blessed you with it in the heavenly realm. But the reason why we don't see it is because of the enemy. It's because of, you know, the enemy taking your blessings captive, the enemy been manipulating, okay, your blessings, he, you know, in the spirit realm, it's called spiritual manipulation, right? Um, the, this is why we don't see it, okay? And so when we talk about your spiritual blessings, because I need you to understand why you're doing all this prayer and fasting. Someone put in the comments the other day, it was like, you know, they was basically trying to mock us from, you know, all this fasting we do. That's our dietary. I was like, get on. I just blocked the person. But you got to understand why you're doing all this prayer and fasting. It's not just for a God or day's marriage, okay? Your spiritual blessings are, yes, it's your marriage promise, okay? But for my standards who are currently married, your spiritual blessing is God said he's going to restore your marriage. He said he's going to restore your spouse. He's going to bring your spouse back home, okay? So, your spiritual blessing, it is the God-ordained marriage. It's also restoration of marriage, but it is also wealth, okay? It's the wealth that is attached to your life. Your spiritual blessing is the favor, okay? Let me tell you something. The enemy puts rejection on us, right? Rejection comes from the enemy. But as you partner with God and you break all this stuff off of your life, God put his favor on you, Okay? Favor is the very thing that brings you into love and acceptance, the very thing that your heart desires. You don't desire to continue to be rejected all your life. You want people to accept you. You want, you know, family, friends, and your, your spouse to love you, right? So God said that's going to come when I put my favor on you. Spiritual blessings are also when, when God bless you with your own family. So he will bless your womb. You know, he gives you Children, if you don't have any, if that's your heart desire, he said, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna open up your womb, I'm going to bless it, 
and you're going to have your own children. You're going to have your own um, family if you have children, but maybe they are prodigal. Maybe they're not serving the Lord because of your obedience, right? Because of this blessing that's our, that God has already blessed you with, he said, because you're doing the work, you're praying and fasting, I'm going to save your children. I'm going to deliver your children out of the hands of the enemy. So that's part of your spiritual blessings. Um, other spiritual blessings are honor, praise, and recognition. Think about it. I want you to think about um, the story of Joseph, right? Joseph was recognized for his gift of interpretation, uh, gift of dream interpretation, right? That's what made room from him, you know, for him. That's what got him out of that prison, right? And then also with um, Ruth, Boaz recognized Ruth's character. He said it in the scriptures. I know, I, I'm a paraphrase. He said, I noticed you are a woman of character or a noble character. I think that's what it said in the Bible, right? So don't worry if you're being overlooked right now. Don't worry if people slander your name, okay, or uh, trying to assassinate your character. God said, "Mm -mm." as you partner with God on this fast and daily prayer and obedience, he said one of your spiritual blessings that he's going to bring you into is honor, He's going to give you honor instead of that shame. He's going to take that shame away from you. You know, he's going to give you praise, all right? He's going to give you recognition, okay? Recognition looks many different ways, all right? Authority and influence also falls up under the spiritual blessings, okay? But some of you, God is going to put you in a seat of authority, like just like similar to Esther and Joseph. And then others of you, God is going to give you um, influence and authority in your family, because some of your family members, I'm talking about aunties, uncles, cousins, mom, dad, sister, brother, siblings, right? Some of them don't take you serious. Some of them are mocking you being a prophet or pastor or a teacher or apostle or evangelist. They, they mocking you. But God said, as you continue to walk with the Lord, he said, I'm going to give you influence. They are going to see what I do to your life. And because as a result of what God does in your life, they are going to come to you just like Joseph brothers and bow down, and they're going to be asking you for help. They're going to be asking you about the God you serve, and you are going to be the one who God uses to teach them, okay? Your spiritual blessing also looks like ownership, land, and property. God said, I would give you houses you did not build. Come on now. So these things are going to be given to you. They're going to be handed to you. Don't worry about how. Leave that up to the Lord. All you got to do is be obedient to the instruction and laws and commandments, okay? Um, Spiritual blessings are also God making you the head and not the lender, okay? So listen. This thing was so good. The Lord gave me all this at like 3 o'clock in the morning, y'all. This is so good. The Lord, he began to speak to me concerning um, Esther. You know, Esther was the orphan. And and before I go to Esther, let me let me talk about Ruth right quick, because Ruth, when, when God led her to the field of Boaz, she was picking up behind, you know, she was picking up the leftovers. But you see how God changed her whole situation around. She went from picking up leftovers to owning the field. Come on now. Come on now. And this is what the Lord is doing. He said, you won't have to beg what I'm doing with you, daughter or son, okay? He said, I'm going to make you owners, okay? He said, I'm going to make you head. You're going to be the first, not the last. He said, I'm going to put you above, not beneath. He said, you're going to be the lender and not the borrower. Come on now. Provision is another spiritual blessing, okay? Um, You're going to come into... Another spiritual blessing is the fact that God is revealing your purpose to you. You know it's a curse to not know your life purpose. Think about it. It's a curse to not know your life purpose because if I don't know my life purpose, that means I'm taking on the enemy's purpose and calling for my life. You know, the devil got a plan for your life as well. He got a plan for you to work this job you hate. He got a plan for you to, you know, to overwork you and have you stressed out. He have a plan for you to retire at whatever age you want to retire at. But let me tell you something. When you step into the calling that's on your life from the Lord, you don't retire from purpose. Purpose fills you up. Purpose strengthens you, okay? Purpose, you know, you, you, you change your lives, right? 
So a spiritual blessing, one of your spiritual blessings is God is going to reveal the purpose that's on your life. And if he haven't revealed that purpose yet, don't worry. It's not time for him to reveal it to you yet, okay? You got to understand, you know, God is all about timing, right? But he is, I, I can say this for a fact, he is right now giving you um, hints about your purpose and calling, right? When he gives you dreams that you need that for your purpose and calling. If he's giving you vision, you need that for your purpose and calling. If he's giving you, if he teaches you how to prophesy, you need that for your purpose and calling. If you are a teacher, right, you need that for your purpose and calling. So he's giving you hints and clues, right, that, that you're going to be utilizing when you get into your purpose and calling, but he may not reveal the whole bigger picture yet because you can't handle it yet. If he told you, okay, that you are going to be the next president, you will run. If he told you that you are going to be the one he used to save your whole family and you got to go through this process and you got to come up against all these witches and warlocks, you would be like, no, nah, God, I don't want it. Send someone else. So he can't tell you. He can't tell you everything yet, but he's going to lead you into it, okay? And he's going to develop you while you're on that way. Other spiritual blessing is healing. It's good health. The word, the Lord gave me a word, a, a, word, a, a, a word this morning, okay? I'm so excited. I got to calm down. He gave me a word this morning. Because a lot of uh, God's children are being um, oppressed by the spirit of infirmity. A lot of God's children, you know, is walking around with sickness and disease in their body. You going to the doctor, you know, um, spending all your money. You know, you, you need, you're looking for the answer, the cure to the problem. But let me tell you something. I'm going to just reveal what the Lord revealed to me. Wait a minute. Let me just rebuild it. Let me get my notebook. Because what the Lord was revealing to me this morning, we don't even have to be sick. You know, scriptures say my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Because you lack the knowledge of what your ancestors have done. You know, we, we talk a lot about generational curses, but there's generational blessings as well. Because you lack the knowledge of what your uh, ancestors has done. You know, there were some ancestors, you know, in your bloodline who walked right with the Lord. And as a result of them walking right, you, you have some spiritual blessings. You got some generational blessings that, that's supposed to have been released over your life, but you don't know. You don't know anything about it. You don't even know how to access it, right? And so this is what the Lord revealed to me this morning. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21, it says, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The seed is speaking to the offspring. It's speaking to the children. It's speaking to the, the uh, descendants, the future generation. You are the seed, okay, of your ancestors, the one who walked right with the Lord, okay? And so because they walked right with the Lord, let me, let me get my other scripture. Wait a minute. So this is for somebody because I, this is not even in my teaching for today. So let me open up Deuteronomy. Hold up. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, starting at verse 1, it says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. Verse number two is what I want you to look at. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you. That's talking about your, your uh, future generation. That's talking about your children's children and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. So, again, there were some people in your bloodline, your ancestors, who walked right with the Lord, who were obedient to the Lord. And as a result of their obedience, it brought them into these blessings, these generational blessings that are still speaking on the bloodline. However, you don't see them. You've been obedient in this process. And you're like, God, where's the money? God, you know, I'm sick. I need healing. God, you know, where's the house? Where's the provision? And God is like, you're, not, you, you, you're lacking the knowledge. You don't know how to get it, right? So here's how we get it. Um, so let me go back to Proverbs 11, verse 21. It says, but the seed of the righteous, that's talking about your ancestors, okay, the one who was living right, 
before the Lord. You are there. You are the seed. Okay, you are in the in the, the bloodline generation. Okay, it said, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And I uploaded two videos this morning on just speaking on deliverance, right? But according to Deuteronomy twenty eight, because of these, because of uh, what your ancestors have done in the past, you qualify for a generational blessings. Okay. So all you have to do is put God in remembrance of his word. We're going to come back to these spiritual blessings. I want to do this part now. All you have to do is open up your mouth. I'm going to say it first, and then I'm going to open up these lines, and I want you to say it. But you want to get a pen and paper, and I want you to write down Proverbs 11, 21. Write down Proverbs 11, verse 21. Open it up. Open it up so that you can repeat this when I open up the lines. Proverbs 11, verse 21. But this is how you go into the, uh, the Lord's camp his kingdom, and you access your blessings, okay? Because let me let me say this. So healing is one of the, um, is, uh, healing of my body has been one of my prayer points, you know, to the Lord for like three years now, right? And the Lord just sent his, his answer today. So I want to show you this first before I open up this line. Luke, is it Luke? Hold up. Luke chapter 13, verse 16, it says, then, then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, you hear that? A daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 years, be set free, right? So this is Jesus uh, speaking to them Pharisees, right? And he's speaking about that woman who had the issue of blood. You see how he referred to her? A daughter of Abraham. She, she was in the bloodline. Because of Abraham's obedience, his righteousness with the Lord, she qualified for her blessings of healing. She didn't know it, though. She went 18 years, you know, bleeding, suffering with this sickness. Many of you, you have generational blessings stored up, but you don't know anything about it. And you've been going 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40, 50, however many years long, suffering. Because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know how to access these generational blessings, right? And so your prayer becomes, Father, you said in Proverbs eleven twenty one, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And so, Father, there are some ancestors. I have, I have ancestors. My forefathers, some of them been righteous. Some of them been walking right. They've been obedient to your laws and commandments, Father, and therefore I qualify for my generational blessings. So, Father, I'm asking that you would release these generational blessings upon my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, whatever that is blocking my generational blessing, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever, you know, the enemy, however way the enemy is taking my blessings captive, uh, Father, I, I place a demand according to your word in Proverbs 11, 21, I place a demand of a release of my blessings in the name of Jesus Christ because I qualify for this. Even though my ancestors have died and passed away, the promise still stands. The promise still applies to my life. And so I'm putting you in remembrance of your word, Father, that you said the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So I'm asking that you would release my generational blessings upon my life. Uh, healing, you know, I'm calling forth my healing in Jesus' name. And let me get that other scripture. Psalms 107, verse 20. It says, he sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You see how I'm sending out his word? I'm sending out Proverbs 11, 21. I'm sending out God's word. His word, because I put him in remembrance of his word, I, I sent it out. Now it's coming back to bring healing into my life, right? You know, and, and it's going to come back and bring whatever else that's due to me back in my life, right? Scripture also talks about death and life are in the power. You hear that? Power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Key words, power and fruit. We speak in life today. Life is the word of God, okay? We speak in life. We put in God in remembrance of his word. And according to this principle, this scripture, it says death and life are in the power. I'm using my power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So I'm about to eat good health. I'm about to eat wealth. 
I'm about to eat prosperity. I hope y'all understand this. I hope you're following me here, okay? So I need you to begin to, you know, put God in remembrance of his word. I'm about to open up this line. Put God in remembrance of his word. Begin to remind God of what Proverbs 11:21 say, and then release. Ask God, release your, your generational blessings because they are due to you, all right? Amen. All right. So let's go back to the spiritual blessings, okay? Because because I have a whole list of these spiritual blessings. It's not just marriage you're, you're, you're going to receive, okay? Spiritual blessings is also you being given the crown, okay? Remember Esther, uh, the king put the crown on Esther's head, okay? Crown is speaking to, yes, the wife's position or even the king's position, but crown is also speaking to your seat of authority as well, okay? So um, this is one of your spiritual blessings, Okay. Um, another spiritual blessing is you winning the king's heart. Remember, Esther won the king's heart, okay? And that's because the Lord put that favor on her, okay? So you're going to win your king's heart, all right? Um, another spiritual blessing is God blessing you with a faithful husband, God blessing you with a respectful wife, a prudent wife, a excellent wife, right? So um, he's going to, you know, do exactly what he said when he told you he's going to restore this prodigal back into their, you know, original self and back into their right mind. He's going to do it. Another spiritual blessing is you, God is going to give you victory over the enemies, okay? He's going to make your name great. That's what he told Abraham. He said, I'm going to make your name great, okay? Um, and that's what God is going to do to you. That's a spiritual blessing, Another one is uh, everything your hands touch will prosper, okay? So God is going to bless your bank accounts. He's going to bless your hands. He's going to bless your business. He's going to bless your ministry, all right? These are the spiritual blessings that the enemy has taken captive. Um, other spiritual blessings are God establishing you, and he announces you as his worker for the kingdom of God. So when your time comes, you know, that's, think about Esther. No one really knew, you know, her calling on her life until it was her time to, to step forward. So he announced Esther when it was time for her, you know, to say her people. That was an announcement, right? And as a result of him announcing Esther, you know, he basically let them know she worked for me. She, she's the one I'm using to help save her people, okay? So when your time comes, God is going to announce you as his worker for the kingdom of God, okay? Have a way and look, right? Um, another spiritual blessing is a covenant of peace, okay? So you will have peace. I know right now, you know, it's like all hell breaking loose. I know right now you tired, you exhausted, you, you know, you, you just going through it. But God said keep keep going, keep 
keep going because I'm bringing you into my covenant of peace, okay? And uh, other spiritual blessings are, um, it's a blessings on the land God gives you. So, yes, so that's the land. Your land is your assignment, like your calling. Your land can also be, um, you know, wherever God moves you to, right? So he's going to bless your land, okay? Um, so I'm trying to give you all a picture of these spiritual blessings that Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 is referring to. God has already blessed you with all of these things that I mentioned in the heavenly realm. But the problem is the enemy has taken your blessings captive. The enemy is manipulating your blessings. The enemy is tampering with your blessings. Are you following me? Okay? So the way how we begin to, you know, align these blessings um, back into place, the first thing we have to deal with, we have to deal with your spiritual house, okay? Because many of you are trying to stand for this God-ordained marriage promise, but your house isn't built. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Hold on, I got I to gotta get my tablet. Because Matthew chapter 7, um, verse 24 through 27, it talks about building your house on the rock. And so let me, let me open this back up. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 7. What did I say, verse 24? Okay, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So the house is, is, is talking about you, like your foundation, your mindset, your identity, your character, right? It's speaking to these things, okay? It's also speaking to the God you serve. It's speaking to your faith, right, your heart, what's going on in the heart, Okay. So, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Underline that. The foundation was on the rock. Verse 26 says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man, underline foolish man, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand, underline sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash, okay? So it's not enough to just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. You got to understand that word, and then you got to do that word, because if you just read it and you do the opposite, you're foolish. This is what the word of God is saying. You are considered a foolish person who is now building your house on sand, and it's going to come crashing down, okay? Many of you, like I said, are trying to stand for this God-ordained marriage promise, but you're falling because your house is built on sand. Soon as you go in that kitchen and you see your prodigal, you're like, I don't know, Tequila, I'm, I'm confused. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I heard right. You know, you start doubting God because your faith is built on sand. We got to build our house on the rock. The rock is the word of God. The, word, the rock is, you know, God himself. The rock is you becoming unmovable and unshakable in your faith, right? The sand can also look like... Um, Depression, sadness, anxiety, doubtful, weariness, confusion, right? Feeling hopeless, right? Um, Double-minded, this is sin, okay? Crocs in character, pride, angry, bitterness, this is sin. So the first step in you know, trying to get to these spiritual blessings, we got it. We have to build our house on the rock. This is the very first thing the Lord dealt with me, you know, when he called me to my, my, my God-ordained marriage promise. He got a hold of me. I kept on saying, God, what about him? What about him? <laughs> he over here and disobedient, disobedient. He was like, God was like, Tequila, do what I say, okay? He was like, let go of this. Stop doing that, okay? He was like, you see, he started, this is what the Lord was saying. He was like, you see your own work before you expect for your prodigal to see your work. This is how God was talking to me. He began to deal with me 
and build me on the rock, okay? So I got to deal with you all, okay? In order to stand strong in this process, we have to be built on the rock, unwavering faith, okay? And I'm going to take you through this process, all right? Uh, We need strength that only comes from the Lord. We need a peace that surpasses all my understanding when I'm being attacked. When I see this product of acting a fool, I am so at, at peace. I don't even understand it. That comes from the Lord. This is how God wants us. Whatever the enemy try to show you in the physical, you're like, I'm unmovable because my faith is rooted in the Lord. Okay? Your identity is not shaken. It's in Christ. There's no cracks in your character because you allow the word of God to build your character. Okay? So the first step in this process um, cause I got to go back to the principles of fasting. Whenever you go on a fast, the first thing you want to do is repent. You want to confess your sins. Okay. Or God won't hear you. Okay. So right now we, I'm going to open up the lines and I need you to just repent for your sins. I need you to confess any unforgiveness in your heart, whatever the Lord brings up to your mind, just, just confess it, repent for your sins. And then we're going to move into, you know, rebuilding our house. All right, the next thing we're going to do after we repent, now we got to rebuke these spirits off of you, okay? Now, let me, let, let me just say this, because, um, you know, deliverance, when we talk about deliverance, there is, you know, when you're calling out these demons, right? You're trying to help the person be set free from these unclean spirits. Now, I don't do that anymore, okay, because if the person, if I, if I take you through a deliverance and I'm calling out these evil spirits, but if I haven't given you the knowledge on how to maintain that deliverance, I'm doing more damage to you because these spirits are going to come back seven times worse. You see, so we want to rebuke these spirits off of you, okay? Um, but you're not going to hear me call it, telling these spirits to come out, okay? And I'm explaining why, because I'm going to rebuke the spirit, right? But um, you need knowledge to help you to maintain this deliverance, okay? So I'm being, I'm operating wisdom by not taking you through this deliverance, like with the calling out of these demons, because I don't want... I don't want you to turn around and fall again tomorrow and then seven more demons, you know, that's worse than the ones that was that I called out come and put you in a in a worse condition, okay? But we are going to rebuke these demons, I mean these spirits, okay? So I'm gonna start off rebuking some of these spirits off of you. I want you to take mental note of whatever 
evil spirit that's attacking you, you know, uh, whatever torment you, if you're dealing with anger, that's a spirit. If you're dealing with bitterness, that's a spirit. If you're dealing with um, pride, greed, addiction, these are spirits, okay? So I'm going to start us off in this process, and then I'm going to open up the lines, and I want you to continue to go. I mean, to um, continue on rebuking these spirits off of you, okay? So, Father, in your son Jesus' name, I rebuke the spirit of depression and sadness off of uh, everyone on this call in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke the spirit of uh, doubt off of your children in Jesus' name. I rebuke that weariness spirit off of them in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of bitterness, anger, resentment, disappointment off of your children, Father, in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of grudge and unforgiveness in Jesus' name. I rebuke all hopelessness in Jesus' name. I rebuke all double-mindedness that's attacking their mind. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of confusion, um, the spirit of distraction in Jesus' name. I rebuke all spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. You said you didn't give us a spirit of fear but love, joy. I mean, not love, joy. I'm going into the fruits of the spirit. You said you didn't give us a spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind in Jesus' name, and that's what I declare over your children. That's what we will walk in in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that spirit of pride off of your children in Jesus' name. I rebuke that haughty spirit in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of arrogance off of your children in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of envy in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of comparison and competition in Jesus' name. I rebuke that irritating spirit, that frustrating spirit. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep it going, whatever spirit you are dealing with. Call it out. Well, not call it out. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. I rebuke that tormenting spirit that that has been tormented the minds of your children. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I 
I rebuke that backsliding spirit off of your children, Father, in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of suicide in Jesus' name. I rebuke that sexual demon off of your children, Father, in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of perversion in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of fornication in Jesus' name. I rebuke that adultery spirit off of your children in Jesus' name. I rebuke that spirit of unfaithfulness in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of lust sexual perversion, masturbation, fantasy of the mind, or sex. I rebuke these spirits off of them in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke the spirit of stagnation off of your children in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of setback, backwardness, and delay off of your children in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity uh, in Jesus' name. I rebuke that poverty spirit off of your children, Father, in Jesus' name. The next prayer point we're going to do is now I want you to renounce covenants. Okay, with this old house. These spears we just rebuke. It represents your old house, okay? So I want you to renounce the covenants um, with this old house. Renounce covenants with doubt. Renounce covenants with fear. Renounce covenants with, you know, complaining. That It simply means I'm coming out of agreement with doubt and what God said. I'm coming out of agreement with complaining, right? Uh, complaining about things I don't even understand. I'm coming out of agreement with fear because when you're in agreement with it, you're giving the enemy permission. That's called legal right to attack you and keep your blessings held up. So we got to come out of agreement with it, break the legal right, right, and then get back in right standing with the Lord. So we're going to renounce covenants with depression, okay? Stop saying you're depressed. You're not. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You got to change your words, okay? Stop claiming anxiety, okay? Rebuke that spirit of anxiety in Jesus' name, okay? And you walk with a mind of peace that surpasses all your understanding. I want you to come out of agreement or covenant with uh, unforgiveness, okay? Uh, come out of covenant with, you know, uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with, okay? Come out of covenant with it. I need you to renounce covenants with it, okay? So the way how you do it, you simply say, Father, I renounce covenants with and you call out the covenant. I renounce covenant with doubt in you. I renounce covenant with confusion. That's another one right there because many of you, you know, it's a habit. Many of you have the habit of saying, I'm confused, Tequila. I'm, I'm confused, Tequila. Stop saying that. That's a spirit of confusion that's attacking you. And each time you say it, you invite that spirit back in to keep you confused. Confusion also falls up under Deuteronomy 28, curses for disobedience. So each time you speak it out of your mouth, you are basically saying, God, give me another curse of confusion. Instead of saying, I'm confused, say, say tequila, I'm seeking clarity. Change the word. I'm seeking clarity regarding whatever, okay? So we're going to renounce these covenants with these all, all these things I named out, okay? So go ahead, open up your mouth and renounce these covenants. I'm <laughs> 
Father, you said you have given me authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the darkness. So I use my authority in your son Jesus' name to rebuke that spirit of distraction that is trying to distract uh, your children on this call today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the, uh, the I pray that uh, I call on Jehovah Gabor, and I ask that you would contend with that spirit that is trying to be a distraction, that is trying to bring this uh, di- uh, discouragement, that is trying to, you know, interfere on our call. I call on Jehovah Gabor, and I ask that you would contend with that spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. You said you will fight against those who are fighting against me, and you will contend with those who are contending against me. So your will be done. Father, in your son Jesus' name. The next thing we're going to do, because we repented, we rebuke, we renounce, now we're about to replant, and we're going to, re- we're going to replant the word of God, okay? This is what I do, okay? I do this every day, um, and, and when I move this way in prayer, I see, you know, I just see answer prayer, like suddenly, okay? Because when I replant, Replant means I'm taking the word of God and I'm just speaking it over my life, okay? This is really what prayer is. Prayer is you praying the word of God. It's praying the scriptures over your life, right? Um, So we're about to replant. I'm going to – I have a whole list of scriptures, okay? So you just come into agreement with it, okay? You come into the agreement – into agreement with these scriptures I'm about to uh, speak over your life. We – rebuke and we renounce like doubt and confusion so we're going to plant faith okay we're going to plant peace you know you whatever you rebuke and renounce you want to plant the opposite okay this is how this works and this is also how you begin to move these spiritual blessings in place okay because remember the enemy you know the enemy use word curses the enemy, we pray in the will of God. The enemy, you know, would take your prayers and it's called backwards prayers or negative prayers. You know, they would speak word curses, right? So when you pray the will of God, you know, the scriptures over your over your life, God's word can't return back to him void. So now his word is the very thing that's going to move. It's going to push away those word curses. It's going to move, you know, them backwards prayers out of the way, okay, so that you know, your spiritual blessing can bow and be hovering over your life in the sphere of realm, okay? So, um, Father, your word says in Job, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. So first, we're going to start off decreeing. Before, before we start off decreeing, because I, I don't want to, I don't want to assume everyone is saved, okay, that's on this, this um, call, I'm about to say live. <laughs> I don't want to assume everyone is saved, okay, because in order to qualify for spiritual blessings, you got to be in right standing with the Lord. You have to have a substitute, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, as Lord and Savior over your life. So um, scriptures say in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So 
whoever whoever this applies to right now, we're going to give you a moment, okay, for you to come into agreement, for you to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and then you will be saved, okay? So take your moment and go ahead and believe that. All right. So, um, again, I'm going to say these scriptures over you, okay, because according to Job, it said, it said, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. So I'm going to decree these words, the, the scriptures over your life, and you come into agreement with it, okay? So, Father, your word declares in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, you said, and without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists so that he Reward those who seek him in Jesus' name. So I thank you, Father, that you are rewarding us who seek in you. You are rewarding us because we have faith right now with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, you said in Matthew 21, verse 22, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So, Father, we are declaring your word. We ask that you will increase our faith in you, Father. You know, uh, increase your uh, our faith in you, Father, in Jesus' name. You said in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So, Father, you know, as I decree your word over your children, you know, we are believing that you are increasing their faith, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We are believing that you are growing them in faith, okay? And as they are hearing your word, your word is pushing out that spirit of doubt. Your word is pushing out that spirit of doubt that is operating, you know, in them in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So this is what we will walk in. You said we walk by faith and not by sight. So this is our decree over our lives in Jesus' name. I'm going to move into forgiveness, okay? We got to, um, we're building our house on the rock. So we got to, we're going to uh, build on forgiveness, okay? So uh, let's see. I got a whole lot of scriptures here. Let me see. I got to pick out some. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 say, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you in Jesus' name. That is our decree over everyone today, Father, in Jesus' name. You also said, um, wait a minute. You also said in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So, Father, we have already repented. We have already confessed our sins. So we ask that you will refresh us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We also pray Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we thank you, Father, that there is no condemnation. We are not living up under any of, any of the enemy's condemnation, Father, in Jesus' name. And you also declare in James chapter 5, verse 16, you said, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So that is our decree, Father, that as we work uh, confessing our sins, you know, and we pray for one another, that healing is coming upon us now, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm going to move to strength. Okay, we need strength, okay? If you've been feeling exhausted or fatigued or, you know, um, tired, you need God's strength, okay? So here's the scripture. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, Father, this is our decree. This is the word I'm speaking over your children, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us in Jesus' name. You said in Isaiah 41, verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Father, that you are strengthening us. We thank you, Father, for your powerful right hand that is upholding us, Father. Whenever we feel like we fall, falling, Father, we call on that right hand, and we ask that you will uphold us with that right hand, Father, in Jesus' name. You said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, in Jesus' name. You said in Isaiah 40, verse 31, 
but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So, Father, we are waiting on you, Father. We are waiting on the Lord, Father. We are waiting for you to renew our strength, Father. You said the joy of the Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. You also said, Father, wait a minute. Turn this. You also said in Psalm 73, verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So, Father, this is our decree that you are the strength of our heart and our portion forever in Jesus' name. And I'm going to say one more. Wait a minute. Let me look. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 say, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. So we thank you, Father, that you are establishing us and you are guarding us against the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ. That is our prayer. We're going to move into love, okay? We need love in our heart, okay? We got to keep a pure heart, a clean heart, okay? Um, this is how we begin to plant our house. Remember, the house represents you, okay? The house represents your soul, what's going on in there. The house represents the condition of your heart, okay? So we are planting the word uh, over your house, okay? The word cannot return back to God void. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 8 say, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And your word also says that perfect love drives out fear. And so, Father, we ask that you will perfect us in your love, Father. Search our heart, Father. Wherever you find, you know, fear, drive it out with your love, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever uh, you find the envy, the resentment, uh, the irritation, the rudeness, Father, the unkind spirit, drive it out with your spirit of love, Father. Perfect us in the spirit of love, Father, in Jesus' name. You also said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bear with one another in love. So this is our decree. Uh, this, is, yeah, this is my decree over your children, Father, that we will bear with one another in love. We ask that you would give us that spirit of humiliation, that spirit of gentleness, that spirit of patience, um, you know, so that we can bear in one another in love, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. You also said that love, according to Proverbs 10, 12, love covers all offenses, Father. And so we thank you, Father, that you are teaching us how to love. We thank you, Father, that you are giving us a heart to love, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that we are getting to know where love comes from. According to your word, love comes from you, Father. Love comes from you, Father. And so as we get to know who you are, we are learning what love is, Father, in Jesus' name. You also said in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, Father, this is our decree. I speak this word over your children that they will begin to show their love for their heavenly Father in their action by keeping your commandments. They will hate what you hate. They will love what you love, Father, and they will walk in your truth, Father, in Jesus' name. So let's move to, let's see, mindset, okay? Let's pray over your mind, okay? We've got to put some word on your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So, Father, I decree this over your children, that they will no longer be conformed to the patterns of this world. They will be transformed by the renewal of their mind, Father, in Jesus' name. I ask that you will renew their mind, restore their mind, Father, in Jesus' name. You also said in Isaiah 26, verse 3, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Father, we ask that you keep us in perfect peace. And the way how this perfect peace is going to stay, is going to come upon us is that we keep our mind stayed on you, Father. So we ask that you do as your word say in the name of Jesus Christ. You also said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 24, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new self. 
created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So I want you to begin to uh, just just say out your mouth, I'm putting off, I'm taking off my old self, okay? Begin to take off. It's like clothes. Take it off, okay? We put it on the new self, okay? We walk in in the newness of the Lord, okay? So, Father, as they are, you know, taking off their old self, right, we ask that you would come in and renew, okay, the spirit. Renew their minds, Father. Renew their soul, Father. You know, creating them a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within them, Father, in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. And not as him, and he will make straight your path. So, Father, we ask that you would teach us how to trust you, Father. Do you know whenever you um, struggle with trust issues, that's because you don't, you don't trust yourself? Or God. So if you want to learn how do I trust myself, well, you got to learn how to trust God first. As you learn how to trust God, because he's going to teach you, then he'll teach you how to trust yourself, right? But, Father, we ask that you will teach us how to trust you, Lord, with all our heart. Purge out of our heart whatever's preventing us from trusting you fully. Whatever it is that we have witnessed in the past that is causing us to no longer trust people or to trust you, Father, purge it out of us. Heal that part of us, Father. Bring healing to it, Father, in Jesus' name, and move us into a level of trusting you, walking by faith and not by sight, Father, in Jesus' name. Your word also declares in Colossians 3, verse 2, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. So, Father, we decree that we are setting our minds on things that are above and not on earthly things in Jesus' name. Let's, Let's deal with your thoughts, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 6, say, for we walk. In the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy, Father, I ask that you would destroy every argument and every lofty opinion that has raised itself against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought that is not in alignment with the will of God, and we make it obedient to Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word tell us what we should be thinking on in Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, we will think about such things, Father, in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Father, that you are making us aware of our thoughts, and we are taking captive any thought any demonic thought, any negative thought that doesn't align with the will of God, any thought that doesn't align with what you say about us, Father, we take it captive and we make it obedient to Christ, okay? The way how you make these thoughts, okay, because there are thoughts that come to your mind that tell you you're stupid. There are thoughts that come to your mind that tell you you're ugly or you're not attractive or you can't do this and you can't do that. You got to take that thought captive and you make it obedient to Christ by speaking the word over it. That thought tells you what you can't do. You said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. you got to begin to sow and plant these seeds in your mind, in your thoughts, okay? you got to become aware of these thoughts the enemy is sending to your mind, all right? Let's deal with the heart, okay? I said, I said one of them, creating, creating uh, your children a clean heart, renew it right here within the Father in Jesus' name. You also said in Ezekiel 36, verse 26, and you will give us a new heart and a new spirit. You said you will put within us. You said you will remove the heart of stone from our flesh and give us a heart of flesh. So, Father, your will be done in our life, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us a new heart. Give us a new spirit. Begin to cry out and ask God, give you a new heart. Go ahead and receive your new heart. Begin to ask God, give me a new spirit in Jesus' name, okay? Your word also declares in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see good. Father, purify our heart. Purify our heart. Whatever's in our heart that is not of you, Father, remove it in Jesus' name. You said in Psalm 34, verse 18, that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. You also say in in Psalm uh, 147, what is it, 140, no, 143 verse, it, it's something. I know the scripture. You said you heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. So, Father, we ask that you will bind up our mother and father wounds in Jesus' name that, is, that has hidden itself in the heart. 
Bind up that bitterness wound, Father. Uproot that spirit of bitterness. Uproot that wound of bitterness out of our heart, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that you bind up all rejection wound in your children, Father, in Jesus' name. Bind up their betrayal wound, Father, in Jesus' name. Bind up that abandonment wound, Father, in Jesus' name. Bind up the wounds that came from their past, Father. Bind up every word curse that is still prospering over their life, still coming to their mind, coming to their memory, Father. Bind that up in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up, you know, any trauma, unhealed trauma, childhood wounds, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that you bring healing to it. We ask that you bring your spirit to it, Father. Heal these wounds in Jesus' name. And, Father, your word also declares uh, in Psalm 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of uh, your heart. So, Father, this is our decree that we would delight ourselves in you, Father. And as we are delighting ourselves in you, you are giving us the desires of our heart. The last one I'm going to speak on is body, okay? We need some prayers over our body, okay? You said in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20, that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You said, you know, um, we are to glorify God in our body. So, Father, I ask that you would teach us how to take care of our temple, teach us what to feed our temple, teach us how to protect our temple, teach us how to care for our temple, Father, Teach or give us eyes to see our body as a temple, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. You also said, Father, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, you said, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. So, Father, teach us how to discipline our body and keep it under control. In Jesus' name, this is one of the fruit of the spirit, self-control and discipline. So, Father, we thank you that you are giving us the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, um, humility, you know, self-control, discipline, all of these spirits you're giving us, Father, in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we, um, let, me, let me say this one over you, 1 Corinthians 6.18, it says, flee from sexual immorality. This is my decree over all your children, Father, that they will begin to flee from sexual immorality in the name of Jesus Christ, and they will walk in purity. They will walk in wholeness. They will walk in, um, um, you know, they will, they will protect their body. They will protect their temple. They will respect themselves, Father. You said in Psalms 139, verse 14, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You said, wonderful are your works. Our soul knows it very well, Father. Help us to see ourselves as fearfully and wonderfully made. Purge out of our soul, our mind, our emotions, our will, whatever opposite of us, you know, seeing ourselves as wonderful. Whatever is preventing us from seeing ourselves as you, Father, we ask that you will purge it out of us, purge it out of our soul, Father, and give us eyes to see ourselves how you see us, Father. You said that we are the apple of your eye, Father. Teach us what it means to be the apple of your eye, Father, in Jesus' name. You said that we are, you said if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. You know, the old has gone, the new has come. And so, Father, we thank you that we are dwelling in your presence. We thank you for this newness that is coming upon us. We thank you that you are tearing down our old house and you are rebuilding our house on the rock. In Jesus' name, tear down that house of sand that is producing rotten fruit. In Jesus' name, and we ask that you build us. We ask that you plant us on the rock. Plant us in our identity in Christ. Rebuild our character, Father. Purify our heart, Father. In Jesus' name. So that is it. Um, that concludes our fast for today. Um, let me look over my notes right quick. We still, we're going to give to the poor today. Make sure you're activating these principles while you're fasting. But we're giving to the poor today. Um, make sure you read your word, okay? Remember, the whole purpose of this fast is to align these spiritual blessings back in place. So when you pray the word of God, number one, you dispatching out your angels, okay, to go and and fight up against this principality, okay? These all these evil spirits that's attacking you. When you pray the word of God, when you just speak the word of God, just like how I was just doing, angels were dispatched. They fighting on your behalf. When you pray the word of God, you speak the word of God. Now God stepping in and He's destroying that spell word. He's destroying these demonic rituals. He's destroying. Okay, whatever the enemy has planted over your life that's, that's blocking your blessing, God comes in, and through his power, he destroys 
the kingdom of darkness power over your life, okay? So make sure you're reading your word um, over yourself uh, today. Spend the time in the word and um, pray over yourself before you go to sleep tonight, okay? Because we broke some covenants and the enemy will try to come to you in your dream and try to put you back in that covenant you just broke it free um, out of. So pray over yourself before you go to sleep tonight. Uh, rebuke monitor spirits, you know, before you go to sleep or ask God to destroy these monitor spirits that show up in your dreams. Begin to rebuke that incubus or succubus spirit, those are spirits that come and try to have sex with you at night. You know, um, take authority over your dreams so that the enemy cannot come through. Also ask God to prevent you from eating and, and drinking, you know, anything in your dream. You know, prevent, prevent you from being bitten by anything in your dream, okay? Prevent you from talking in your dreams to the enemy, okay? You want to make sure that you are protecting yourself, okay, even while you are sleeping. This is how we protect ourselves. You got to pray it. You got to, you know, ask God, do this, protect me, okay? Get in the habit of reading Psalms 91 over yourself, okay? That's that's that protection prayer. But with that, um, I'll see you all tomorrow, okay? I'm excited. I'm still excited from what the Lord revealed to me this morning. But I will see you all tomorrow. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your day.